For a personalized URL experience, a lot of people like to put subdomains in front of their domain specific for a particular user or group of people. But how do we route to that? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to have a little bit of a play with uh, configuring routing to allow routing to different areas of the application, not based on the URL, or the, the last part of the URL, but rather the first part of the URL, so the subdomain. Um, so what I have here is a stock standard ASP.NET Core application. I just put a new project it. And I am going to make a quick change over here. Uh, and I am going to use a different URL. So normally we'd end up on something like localhost, some port, but I'm putting a little asterisk in front of it here to say, please bind and listen to everything that is part of localhost. So if I had anything here in front of it, um, then it would be like blah.localhost. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that we listen in on basically anything here. And at the same time, I have updated my hosts file right here to include pig and cow localhost .com. Oh, actually, it's just localhost no .com. Uh, so this means that everything I have, the pig localhost and cow localhost, are going to route to my local machine. And what I'd like to do is have different controllers show up depending on if I'm going to pig or if I'm going to cow. Uh, so let's go and see if we can set that up. Uh, so the first thing we'll need here is a new controller, um, which I think I'm actually just going to steal from a previous project. So let me go and do that. Copy paste for the win. Nobody wants to see me try and remember how to copy and paste things around here. So I will take this this. All right, so I have added a cow controller here and a pig controller. Uh, these are just from a previous iteration. This will just add a two to the name. Make sure everybody's happy. So these are very simple. They are just going to return a view. So this is standard ASP.NET MVC. Uh, and then I will also add a views directory. Yeah, we already have views, but I'm going to expand it with a cow and pig view, each of which is very simple. All right. Uh, so typically, what our routing is going to look like now we've got MVC in here is that we just have this endpoint here and we're going to do controller routing here. So we, we pull up a controller name here, the action name, and the ID, and this is all fairly typical. Um, but what we'd like to do is go to like cal.localhost.com and end up with the cal controller. Uh, so in previous versions of MVC, there has been some ways of doing this, uh, but with new version, things are a little bit different uh, now that we have kind of endpoint routing around. So what we can do is we can create a new class in here. Looks very much like this that I just totally typed out by myself. And just probably blinded by the speed of my typing. That's understandable. Uh, so this is going to be a route transformer, and this implements the abstract class dynamic route value transformer. Uh, and basically it allows us to change the way that the routing works inside of the, the system. So we can put anything that we want in there. Let's just make sure that I'm using the right namespaces here. Here we go. Um, Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the request. So the request contains a host variable, and on that is a wide variety of stuff, including the port, but also somewhat confusingly another variable called host. So we end up with host or host, uh, and I'm going to split that string and just take the the first part in it. So in here if we can have it like cow.localhost.com or just localhost. Uh, we should end up getting cow. 
on this. Uh, and I will write that out here just for debugging purposes. I'll remove my rather, rather, my other rather embarrassing debugging bit here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see if we have a subdomain from here, then I'm going to replace the value of controller with that subdomain. So it should allow us to route directly to that subdomain. So let's save this and just do a quick .NET run here. Okay, so now we've got everything compiled. Let's start it up and we'll grab ourselves a browser here. So I've got pig.localhost here. So if I hit refresh on this, I get to the home page uh, because I have forgotten to make one important change here. So it's not enough to simply put this class in here that nothing knows how to use. Uh, we need to actually hook it up. Uh, so I'll change this map controller routing here to map dynamic control routing. And I'll just take the name out of this. We'll use the same index pattern here, I think. Uh, which transformer to use? Um, so, oh, yes, that's true. Uh, if you need the sub routing transformer uh, and then you also need to register this up here in the services collection services at singleton all right and now if we restart that should have a little bit more luck this time all right so here we are a pig so we end up on the pig page and if we change that to cow end up on the cow page and of course if we change it to something else uh, that we end up just on an error page here because we haven't mapped donkey we don't have a controller for donkey. Uh, so this gives you the ability to choose different controllers based on this uh, but I mean you can do almost anything else in here as well uh, so you could put things in here to add additional routing parameters. So if you wanted to set it up so you had a different area here, uh, then you could use the same sort of approach and have an area front here. Um, yeah, that's, that's an example I've seen. So you do like admin dot for the admin section of the site, that kind of thing. Yeah, so this in combination with, I guess, like a wildcard SSL certificate uh, and um, mapping all of your subdomains to the, the same thing should allow you to project pretty much any domain dot your domain uh, and have that working nicely. Uh, so I have a project right now that I am gonna deploy this on in short order and it should make for a slightly better user experience because it can be like company.mycompany.com uh, and then I get some the feeling that it's a super personalized experience and then I put a lot of effort into it when really I, I haven't done a whole lot. It's all still just one site. Yeah. Very cool. True. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this episode of the ASP Net Monsters. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we will see everybody on the next episode. Bye. Bye.